We unpack We unpack We unpack Coming to your live boxing ego unpack Yeah We unpack We unpack We unpack Anthony Joshua says, if you suggested that he switch trainers, you a fucking clown. Oh, my God. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, this AJ, the untold truth, it's getting some spins. You know, a lot of people are talking about it because he said some quotable things. And during this telecast, AJ, he, you know, went in on anybody who even makes the suggestion that he should leave Rob McCracken. And Joshua says, and I quote, whoever said that, that I should leave, whoever said that is a clown, part ways with McCracken, no way. These people don't understand loyalty. These people aren't cut from the same cloth. If that's what they're suggesting, whoever has that mindset should not bother talking to me if they have that mindset. How could they say that? I've worked with two people in boxing, Sean Murphy, my trainer at Finchley Amateur Gym. Then a year and a half later, I was up to Sheffield. I was up to Sheffield training with Rob McCracken. They have built me, aside from boxing, as the man I am today, a father, a family, a businessman who understands the responsibility of being a young, young African-British kid. They built that in me. You can't take that away. You can't take you could take the belts away. They will be gone when I retire. The man that they built, you can't take that away. The man that will help to inspire my kids and other kids, you can't take that away. I should never get rid of those people because I lost the belts. I should get rid of the people that built me. No way. It's shallow minded, small minded. Mike Tyson could have lost to anyone, but you can't get rid of Customato. People do not truly understand what these people mean to your life. Now, <laughs> I totally 1000% disagree with Anthony Joshua. Joshua is calling people. He, so I guess I'm a clown. I guess I'm Pennywise out this bitch because I disagree. He says, if you think he should leave Rob McCracken, then you're a clown. Well, I guess that puts me in the in Stephen King's it. You know, hello, Georgie. You, you're going to leave without your without your boot. <laughs> I like popcorn, Georgie. Down here, they all float. You all float, too. Like, I guess I'm a clown. Because I think he should, <laughs> I think he should get another trainer. You know, first of all, Joshua is lashing out. You know, Lennox Lewis is one of the people who openly said it. So maybe this is kind of directed to him. But just listen to what the man is saying. He's saying it's shallow minded and small minded. What's more small minded? You, you are with the same team since Finchley and all this amateur stuff and you've been with the same two people and you're stressing loyalty and these people may have taken you as far as as they could right and to grow in other ways to to get better you know people are suggesting that you you find maybe a, a different fit a different suit listen my thing is this nobody is telling Joshua to unfollow them on Instagram or Snapchat or delete their number. You know, there is this thing called uh, amicable split, right? And the other thing is, this is boxing. I know boxing. I, you know, I studied these guys and the stories and stuff. Many a trainer have left their trainer for whatever reason, you know, maybe a disagreement, money, whatever. And went back. I could think of multiple. Let, let's go. Let's try it out. I could think of multiple trainers. Robert Guerrero left his dad as trainer for one fight. And that's the fight. he His first loss. You know, because the Salido fight didn't count. Because Salido tested positive with something. But he lost to this other dude. And, he, and then he went right back to his dad. And he's been with his dad, you know, really ever since. 
and he came back and revenged that dude, you know, stopped him. Um, you look at Gabe Rosado. Gabe Rosado was with Billy Briscoe for the Triple G fight, but then he started working with my dude Greg Hackett, and he started working with Fernando Vargas and different people after that point. You know, I don't know exactly what fight he left Billy Briscoe, but then he went back to Billy Briscoe, maybe Luis Cuba Adias or one of those fights he or martin murray he was back with billy briscoe right so that's already two examples of people who have left trainers only to come back kel brook is another person from since we're talking about uk fighters kel brook publicly left dominic engel and people you know were like oh man so basically realistic la you know he left and then i just found out that he just reunited with dominic engel so stuff like this happens. It, it's not like Joshua sounds small minded, you know, and shallow minded or whatever he's saying, because it, it's not the end of the world. If these people are great people that you want in your life, you can keep them in your life. You can really keep them on your team in some capacity. But that doesn't mean they can take you that they're they're built to take you to the next level. And what he's saying, just listen to what he's saying. He said, they built this in me. And, you know, and some of what he said sounded really weird to me. He says, they built that in me and told me the responsibility of being a young African British kid. So how did how did a Caucasian male tell you how it is to be an African British kid? You know, something that he's not. So that that statement to me was a bit weird. You know, how, how does someone teach you? Like, he could have just said, he taught me to be a man or something. That's cool. But he said he taught, like, basically, he taught me to be a young African British kid. How does a, a non-African British person teach you how to be that? But whatever. You know, he could have just said, you know, they've instilled the values and stuff. And, and like I said, no, first of all, nothing has to be permanent. If... If, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, like I said, you can always come back. So to me, what really sounds small minded staying in this paradox, in this box, not willing to try other people's suggestions, you know, guys like Lennox Lewis, who have been on top of the world, you know, and been undisputed, not willing to do that because you came in with these guys. See, Joshua sounds small minded, if we're really being honest, because a lot of people, I'm just going to tell you my opinion. A lot of people have this fake notion of loyalty. You don't have to stay loyal to anything that's not loyal to you. You know, like just think of a relationship, right? And sometimes people outgrow certain relationships, you know, or at least a business relationship. And that happens. Like I've done business with people and it ran its course, but that doesn't change how you feel. Like I did music in a group. To this day, I just talk to my my people. They, those are my boys. Those are my friends for life. You get what I'm saying? So just because we we stopped doing music doesn't mean everything was deaded. So there's different levels of loyalty, you know. Um, like I said, nobody's asking him to betray Rob McCracken or whatever. So I I think what Joshua said was extreme to call someone a clown and say they're being shallow minded, small minded because they're trying to help you and tell you hey like see this is what i'm saying he's taking it defensive because this is like a father figure to him or whatever this uh, the case is but it's, it's nothing against rob mccracken i don't think anybody has said anything you know directed like oh rob mccracken ain't did you know it's just joshua's style sometimes people they've taught you all that they know and the reality of it is it's not just the loss it's not just because you lost people thought you you would be up for um another trainer in general a lot of people but the thing is when you look at it when you're winning if you're winning then it, it's kind of it's kind of like if it ain't broke don't fix it so it comes out a bit more i would say when you do take a l you know people could have always felt this way that hey you know I think he can learn more with the Floyd Sr. or Virgil Hunter or, or Robert Garcia or whoever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Freddie Roach could teach him that. You know, they've always felt this way. I've heard people talk like that. I felt this way. You get what I'm saying? And it just 
at the end of the day, if he was winning, he was winning. So you can't harp on it too much. Do you get me? You can't really harp on it if someone continues to win and they're just doing it their way. But that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that you're like, ah, I seen this coming. You know, just picture this. You know, I'm the king of analogy, so I'll give you guys a quick analogy. Let's say you have a, a best buddy and they're in a bad relationship and their girl's a hoe, you know, and he's happy and she hasn't done anything outright like so crazy where you have to like really you know say hey man you need to leave this chick so you just let that person experience life and and then that one moment happens where she it comes out you know in public and he catches her cheating with the next dude in his house when he's supposed to be at work then it's like okay see you know i i, I kind of warned you to this but like i said if not if nothing people can have these like I had a bad feeling about this girlfriend or I had a bad feeling about this boyfriend and they just let it ride because nothing too extreme has happened yet. You know, and I think that's kind of a similar analogy for this Joshua. Yeah, people let it ride with Rob McCracken and um, Joshua as a tandem because he was undefeated because he was winning. But now that he lost, people are really starting to 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 view it and to me this is kind of like the unraveling of anthony joshua to me and the reason i say that is because he's getting tattoos on his finger and lashing out at lennox lewis calling him a clown saying you're a clown if you anyone suggests that he should find a new trainer you know and what he says sounds ridiculous because he's talking about adding to the equation so you you feel that you need some level of a change because if you if you liked everything that was going on why would you add anyone to it if if you know what you did wrong and rob mccracken is the greatest trainer for you and he taught you how to be a man then why do you need to add anybody to it so joshua himself sounds very highly confused because if, if as far as i'm concerned if you have a chemistry and a formula that's working so great, then why would you have to add an additional set of eyes or additional person? Obviously, you're doing that because you're in dire straits and you just took a bad loss and you have to regroup. So to call people a clown because they suggest you would be better suited looking in different options, I, I think that's that's too far. That is really too far. And again, it's, it's not that insane to think when he himself said he he wants to keep rob mccracken and add on a different person so joshua he just seems like he's stubborn he, he's gonna ride it out you know good luck to him best of luck to him for the andy ruiz rematch but the way he's talking the way he's acting it, it looks like he's having a hard time processing this particular loss and to me he seems a bit erratic and a little bit volatile and i don't think these are good good signs because he, he seems like a bit like kind of like a loose cannon you know he went from his moniker stay hungry stay humble and then now he's like like gangster tough talk and hey what set you claim cuz you know and no squares in my circle cuz and he's acting different talking different and has a different energy like wilder was pressing him for a year two three years and he didn't, he said, oh, yeah, I don't, you know, why should he get in my ring? This is my ring. He's not allowed. You know, I don't do fake hype. Klitschko never did this. You know, he's saying these things. But now he's like, I mean, I whoop Joshua. I mean, I whoop Ruiz's ass in Mexico. His uncle could be the ref. I whoop him. He ain't that skillful. What happened to all the humble stuff, though? What happened to the no fake hype? You don't even have a fight agreed to. You got to appease Ruiz's team. And so isn't this fake hype? You you bad mouthing him. And we don't even know if the fight's going to remain in Saudi Arabia because people like Bob Arum, Bob Arum's a lawyer. Bob Arum was an attorney. He was, an, he was a lawyer. And he just came on record and said what I said. They might be able to find a way out of Saudi Arabia. And Bob Arum said it like this. He said it perfect. He said that he said they picked the one place in the world where Andy Ruiz might be able to get out of it legally get out of it because the u.s government suggests that there's travel advisories and this may not be safe so either that or they're gonna have to pay him a substantial amount more money and and he says that ruiz has has eddie hearn stupid eddie hearn that's what he called him 
by the balls. And I agree that Ruiz, he can either demand more money, he could act like he's terrified for his life, whether he's is or not. He might not be worried about fighting in Saudi Arabia, but he could play it, you know, play it off and put it on thick. Like, oh, I'm so scared. I need more money to, to go because I don't want it. You know, or maybe he does have concerns, you know, about, hey, how's my wife? Is she going to how's she going to be treated? It's a different culture, different custom with women and et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So maybe there are real concerns, but either way, you can um, potentially get out of it. So, you know, Joshua just seems like he has a lot of misdirected anger. And I, I, I truly disagree with him to say that you're a clown if you think he should switch trainers. I think he should switch trainers. It is not even just this one fight, but this is now you now have an excuse to switch trainers because you just took a horrible loss. And now your your promoter pushed for an immediate rematch. Now it's dire straits is desperate times call for desperate measures It's do or die. So people like Lennox Lewis and myself who are saying that Joshua should look at different options and trainers. Nobody's saying it because out of malice. You know, because we hate Rob McCracken. People are saying it because they're trying to help you. But Joshua can't understand that. You know, people are trying to help you because you're in a do or die situation, a must win crossroads fight based on the fluke, you know, revenge or repeat. What's it going to be? You know, so you have to you have to be a well oiled machine and get it cracking on all cylinders because another loss in the same fashion or worse or earlier would be catastrophic for Joshua. So I, it's, it's sad because Joshua's like damn near like goodwill hunting. Well, I'm not saying he's a genius like in that movie, but he just seems to be lashing out and has a lot of like pent up aggression or anger or whatever. And I, I think that some somebody should talk to him because this, this sounds like, um, kind of a casualty of him losing and him trying to deal with all of the changes that have happened seeing another man with his old belts and trying to process the loss and it seems like he's having a hard time doing it so he's lashing out at people who really aren't the enemy i don't think lennox lewis is the enemy the stuff i say on my channel like i if i seen joshua and he, you want to have a conversation we can have a, a i'm a man you know what i'm saying we can have an adult conversation i can you know that's that's what it is you know we can have dialogue back and forth that's how it should be i'm not i don't ever say nothing about any of these fighters out of personal disdain I, none of these fighters did nothing to me personally but if as a boxer or in boxing in the world of boxing i tell you my opinions on their actions they're in the the limelight what do you expect you know so to me, I don't think you're a clown if you suggest that he needs a new trainer. I also think Joshua kind of has more of an American style or he has the potential to have more of an American style, which would work with because he's he's physically a unit. You know, he's physically big, right? He's six, six. His arms look like a decent length. You know, he's in shape. So he has the, um, you know, the fear factor, whatever you want to call it, like just the perception of him like, oh, shit, he's a big dude right he has punching power clearly he has some experience from the amateurs gold uh gold medal and all that right i think he'd be better suited with more of an american style of fight and more of american trainer he needs to move his head and things like that things like floyd senior roger mayweather would be able to teach him over time but he seems dead set in his ways and when it comes to people like that then you got to just let them be who they're going to be and do whatever they want to do but for me i think joshua is you know really he has like animosity at the wrong people you know i don't think how he came at lennox lewis that's a legend you know and he calling everybody a clown and saying these things if you disagree then you're a clown and don't talk to me it's just it seems like he's going through a lot so this untold truth what happened to all the humble you know they the 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 reporter says oh ruiz um were you so were you shocked with how skillful he was and joshua said oh he ain't that skillful like what kind of and she was like he beat you that's that's embarrassing you saying he ain't that skillful and then she told you without you know hesitation he beat you so what does that mean 
you know so i don't, I don't know what the, what's up with this whole hollywood hogan um change and you know he'll turn personalities but joshua doesn't sound like the smartest knife in the drawer with what he says you know and he, uh, he's talking about oh rob mccracken he he's there for my life that's cool you can sometimes people are better suited in different capacities like this is your career this is your job it doesn't mean you hate rob mccracken you have to do what's best for you like that's like i don't know i i i guess my my view i am a loyal person and i believe in loyalty but loyalty not loyalty to a fault like how can you allow yourself to stagnate your career or your own personal growth just to stay loyal to something that doesn't make sense to me and it never will you know where i'm going to limit my growth and possibly have regrets because i chose to stay in a situation you know joshua he said he wanted to be a, a boxing billionaire and i just don't see it because he, he's he's calling people small-minded who are telling them to think outside the box and maybe find someone new you know and, and some guys don't want to do it like even like canelo people said this about the reynosos they said oh the reynosos are cool but maybe canelo would be better suited with the train a different trainer see we don't know like there might be a trainer that is out there that has canelo looking even canelo's already a great fighter there might be a trainer that helps him with his stamina you know what i'm saying by by running through certain drills same thing with joshua joshua is a he has a lot of gifts naturally you know what i'm saying six six long arms but power blah 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 um he has a pretty good jab he didn't in the ruiz fight but in general i've seen a pretty good jab uh, very good very nasty uppercut um good hooks things like that seeming like he wants to learn so those those things are cool but you can't just discount everyone else and just be like oh why should i leave him he's been here from the start that's cool not everyone's meant to be on your whole journey and like i said if, if he's that personal personable of a friend you can maybe use him in, in a different capacity for your mitt guy or something like that but you could do it your way you know joshua could do it his way and then continue to fight and you know possibly have regrets when it don't work you only get one life you know you only get one shot one opportunity and i'm just saying this from a perspective of a boxing fan i've seen joshua doing drills and obviously his coach is okay with him doing drills and this is not the drills of a heavyweight fighter he's doing like like he's competing in a strongman contest he's doing stuff that really has nothing to do with boxing like there's different things i can understand to try to be explosive but he's doing all these things and andy ruiz he looks you know he looks like tubby and he's having better stamina than you that's a problem so you're doing all this impressive like instagram workouts where it looks like you're strapping like leather like bands like you know electric chair headgear and leather belts and shit to your head and pulling trucks with your teeth and explosive medicine ball drill you know doing all of this different stuff that you've seen him do during training but his stamina doesn't look up to par he's not doing boxing related drills with a lot of what he's doing and somebody's okay with this and his team because nobody's checked him nobody said hey you know limit that and he and his stamina is is lacking floyd senior i promise you as much as that man knows about boxing he's not gonna have joshua you know doing a bunch of heavy lifting or you know certain explosive kettlebell creative weird workouts things that don't necessarily improve floyd senior has been to prison before you know what i'm saying so i'm pretty sure he probably tried to stay sharp with his boxing stuff and he's very limited he didn't have like industrial state-of-the-art stuff so you know joshua can really discard a lot of what he does in training just from the bird's eye view from what i've seen there's a lot of stuff that he, he's kind of doing and i don't you don't really see no other heavyweights doing this type deontay wilder said he doesn't even run he doesn't even run he says he does swimming exercises you know he said he just recently started jump roping after the Tyson Fury fight because he wanted to kind of go back to the basics. And he's actually pretty good with jump roping. You know what I'm saying? 
and Joshua is it, like almost like he's like I said, a Michael B. Jordan. He's doing it for a Creed movie. He's doing it for the aesthetics and the and the look of it, and you know maybe to be imposing, but it doesn't really. It's not helping your stamina. You're doing all. You're spending four hours in the gym, or whatever length of time, doing all this stuff that looks intense and insane, like you're Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know Hobbs and Shaw, but then Andy Ruiz ain't looking like too much of anything, you know, shape wise, and has five weeks to train, and he has far better, far better cardio and stamina. So I disagree with Joshua here. We unpack coming to you live. That's just my opinion. I, I don't think he should um, cancel out or like not consider the idea of a new trainer. But hey, this is his career. And then the last part he said about Mike Tyson and custom auto. I mean, real talk, you don't have a custom auto. And I, I'm not even saying it from like a, a point of contention, like I'm trying to roast him. But that's that's even disrespectful that you would even compare Rob McCracken to Custom Auto. Custom Auto worked with Muhammad Ali and not just Mike Tyson. You know, I know my boxing. So he worked with the greats, Ray Robinsons and shit, bro. You don't have him. You have a British former fighter who has a okay record, you know, and some of the drills and stuff he's doing don't doesn't really seem suited. So that's just my thoughts. We unpacked. I, I don't think it's clownish to consider if you've outgrown a certain circumstance. But hey, like I said, it's Joshua's career. If he feels this is the best trainer and he wants to add on, which again, doesn't make sense. Because if, if, if people are so dumb and foolish to say you should leave Rob McCracken, then why would you even need to consider adding on anybody? Why don't you just stick with Rob McCracken? You've got a great system. He's your father or, you know, additional father to you. And then just keep it rocking. You know, you don't see Errol Spence adding on a different um, trainer because he has Derek James. He has a lot of respect and, and admiration for him. And they have a formula that's working. You don't see him bringing in, you know, Virgil Hunter or somebody else. You know, people usually do that when they feel like they've outgrown a situation like Broner. Broner was working with Mike Stafford. He loves him. You know, he worked with him since the amateurs, but he brought in Kevin Kevin Cunningham, you know, because he wanted to switch some things up. So that's my thoughts. We unpack. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We work it. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.